Hello, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the whole typical cycle of the enterprise asset management. As you can see here, the typical cycle starts from the work request here. That's from where any maintenance request can be issued. And then move to the work order, which is the order based on the work request. Usually the work request is not is an optional step but uh, you can create the work order without the work request or you can create work order and link it to the work request also we have on the work order itself you can request material from the inventory or you can request to purchase material or services and issue it to and issue the material and the services to the same work order over here after you take all the material and finish all your processes, you are going to go to through completion, where you can complete all your work orders. And before you close the work order, you can go through a quality check. This is also optional thing. And then you can close the work order, and then you can start all over the cycle again. So this is the whole basic cycle. There are other things. It's all. It's worth saying that. We have two types of maintenance. The normal maintenance, which is our what they call what's called as the uh, the normal or the breakdown maintenance, which happens according to normal failures, casual failures, not like uh, like the machine is working and then it's breakdown, so you need to fix this one up. And the second thing, the second type is the preventive which is a schedule and aims to uh, uh, increase the productivity and the life cycle of the uh, of the asset itself so let's get back to the to the work itself and see we are going to work in two or in two uh, we're going to work in two responsibilities the enterprise asset management and the maintenance super user here I have opened the enterprise, uh, the, the enterprise maintenance super user. You can see here the responsibility name asset management. This is the maintenance uh, maintenance super user. I have given myself all the functionalities and all the, uh, the permissions. But in the normal life cycle, you are not going to have this. You are going to have just one or two tabs of, of those tabs I'm having. The other thing is that, uh, as you can see, the work request is is created through a self-service form or a web page and the work order is the same the, ma the majority of the uh, of the maintenance transaction can be done through this self-service page which is very very uh, user-friendly interface and you're going to love it so let's start we have here clicking the work request tab I'm over here I can create work request by clicking over here on the link below the tab and the, uh, and, the, and the navigation bar over here or click through the button anyway let's click over here you will find very simple very simple page that needs that you are requesting for maintenance for a failure having through your asset or through your machine so you need to maintain this one simply you are going to enter the asset number you can search for it or you enter it directly see here this is the search search screen I know the asset number 239 so I'm going to enter it directly and then I'm going to press that you will see that this is the assigned department this is I'm, I'm saying that this is the assigned department for this asset I can ask for this department to be changed temporarily for this work request I'm going to assign another department for uh, for this asset and here I'm going to put the priority for my uh, work request I'm going to say it's medium and the work request type. Simply, uh, these are informatic inf uh, information that's inform the user that's going to review all these work requests, what's going on, what I'm going to do about that, and what what I'm planning to do. And I request the maintenance to be done by this date. And this is the Username, not the name of the employee. This is the username of the man 
of the of the one who is asking for uh, the maintenance or the service to be done. So now I have entered the generic information about the work request, which is the request for the maintenance. Now let's enter the description. Description say like like a machine need to be maintained as production line stopped see I enter any description I want anything there is no limit on this one you can write it in the most detailed way that you can see to give the guys in the maintenance the most possible view to assign to you the, the, the right person and and give you the, the service that uh, that you need here if you have, if you want any attachment if you want to add any attachment to the work request you can do this no problem but first you need to create to save the work request and then you can add attachments here is the other creation information this is the created by and the phone number and email and everything if you want to get notification about the status of the work request you can you can ask for it here say notify the user yes if you don't want any notification you can say as a no let's see over here the work request is given a number which is 6166 if I needed to add any additional description I can add it over here if I want to add any attachments I can also add it from here so remember this is request number 6166 see here this is the work request number and the status as open so going back to the guys in the work order I'm going to assume here that the guy who's raising the request and the guys who approve the request are all the same usually you can have one approver if you want if, if, if it's required you can have one approval for the department that's going to approve all the work requests for that department if you logged over here in the work request we're going to check from that there is a notification from this person who is EM work request approval and the subject is work request number 61 double six priority medium need your attention this thing that needs my attention is over here all the details and everything and either I'm going to approve to approve here it, there is no pattern for approval but approving means that you are going to put this work request is ready for work order through changing its status from a, a open to awaiting work order and you can see over here there is a new notification telling me that this is notification doesn't require response that this has been approved by this employee okay now you have created the work request now you are ready to create the work order as I said the work order is, is not required as a mandatory step to create the work request first Work request is like a notification from the user or from the uh, the labor that's working the machine or from in case of a truck like the case is over here. If, uh, the driver is telling you what's going on with my machine, what's going on with my truck. There is a problem. Blah 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 blah. This need to be fixed. He doesn't know the exact problem of his machine. He just or of his truck. He just knows how to describe the the problem to you. All you're going to do is just to take to create a work order. This work order will be 
the exact thing that you are going to do to hit to to the machine or to the truck to fix it and make it to make to bring it back again to the production again so here this is the main screen of the uh, maintenance super user you can see here this is the work request this is my checked out asset we are going to talk about the chicken chicken and check out later this is not a mandatory this is not anything this is only for reporting let's check over here let's see okay work order here if I want to create work orders I'll go to the tab work orders you can see here I'm going to create work order there is an automatic number that's been generated that I can change for this work order I can write any description I want any I put the asset number I will put the department all of this stuff but wait a second I have created a request this request that required I have already approved so what I'm going to do is just I want to reflect this information of the work request into the work order without the need to duplicate the data and enter the enter it all over and over again. So I'm going just to enter the, the request number from here, 6166. I'm pressed up. See? All the details, the asset number, the asset group, the department, all of these things are over here. So, see here. This is a very important and crucial thing. This is the accounting class of the of the of the asset. This this tells us where the asset will be maintained and costed. These are all expenses, and this where it is going to be costed. This is just a term for a set of accounts that's in the setup. However, there is another important field that's called the activity. The activity is an optional field, but it's very important because it can list for you a list of all the operations you are doing. Let's say, for example, if you are using a truck, you are having uh, the oil change. If you have certain maintenance at certain point of kilometers, you have a list of activities you are doing or list of operations you are doing. These can be grouped together into under the name of one activity. This activity is very important to you to maintain if you want to have like uh, a fast or swift entry. Here I'm going to search something like this is the mechanical checkup for the 90,000 kilometer. You can see I can put the schedule start date and the schedule end date. I can change all of this. Like for example, if I just wanted to change that, I will just pick the date. Say for example, 8 February. I can select also the, the, the stats of the work order. The stats is very important thing because it tells us what's the stage of our work order right now. Where is it? The draft is just we are just writing the information of the work order and we just do not do anything about it. It doesn't even affect our reports or doesn't even affect our resources or anything. While the unreleased, unreleased tells us that the work order is already created but it's just waiting for the source to be free for the for anything it's just unreleased and waiting for the confirmation to be released the next one is the release is that the work order is now in action and we are working on the on the asset to be fixed on hold that for any reason you put the work order on hold so you are not going to, to put that there are too many time, there are too many hours that has been spent on this particular work order. No, you just put this work order on hold where you can maintain that this work for, on hold for something that resource is not available or there is a shortage of material. And again, the draft. It's worth saying that and it, it's must to, to remember whenever you put the work order on any of the four, three stages over here on hold, released, unreleased, you cannot go back again to the draft mode draft is that you like your zero or initial point 
that once you go from it, you cannot go back to it again. So I will leave it as a draft over here, and then I will select the workholder type, body shop, preventive, or whatever. This is up to me. This I'm saying that this workholder of type X, Y, Z, you can have it like, for example, uh, this is uh, a routine workholder. This is a, a preventive. This is a, a mechanical thing. Whatever you want, you can say it over here as a, a type of the workholder itself. And this is the shutdown type. This is, uh, you are saying that you must shut down the machine or not. This is required, not required. As you can see, all the, the, the field that contains asterisk to the left of it are mandatory field and you must enter with no asterisk that these, uh, these fields are not mandatory, but it's nice to know or it's nice to have. It's just giving you extra information for your reports, for your understanding, for the work order, that's all. Of course, you can have here additional details. Saying if there is any rebuildable, the rebuildables are uh, just part of the asset that you can maintain, remove, uh, and store, any uh, and uh, store in your inventory, and then issue to another asset. All of these things are called rebuildables. You can also select the activity type. Let's see over here, driving wheel, and the cause of the activity. And uh, if you have any context for uh, as a descriptive extra information you want to catch over the work order itself and the activity source, all of this information this uh, can be maintained over here. Here you can uh, enable material issue request. This automatically, automatically issue requests. Uh, raise purchase requisition for if you are asking for service if you are doing any outside processing for example like you are doing uh, an, an extra uh, external maintenance or you are just you don't have the capabilities or the experience uh, or you don't have even the, uh, the qualified labor to do certain maintenance do so you want to do it outside for with the professional people so you're just going to, to send your asset outside whenever you want to do this and you want to raise the purchase requisition Automatically for this service, you have to enable the material request issue here as a yes. Also, this is very important if you want to uh, request for this kind of uh, direct items or anything, you can issue, uh, you can request for it directly from here. These are the warranty status and the warranty all of these things according to the asset information and also you can check on the failure information of the work order see here there is a failure entry required if you did not enter this failure entry over here if whenever you want to, you are going to complete the work order and say that I have finished the work you have to enter this information so it's right now or later you can enter your uh, failure information of course, it's preferred to make it later, so you can first, uh, if you are working in pair or just you are working on the same time you are doing the work orders, you are, you are recording this on the system, it's better to record it at the end of the cycle whenever you complete the work order. Here is the operation requirement. The operation requirement, first you are going to put all of your operation over here. Say so this is operation number 10 or number 11 according to the activity you have selected over there we are going to see it reflected however for our activities here there is no operation rec uh, recorded for it or uh, recorded for it so uh, it, there is no operation over here as is shown simply I will select the operation I will say operation number like say 100 try to avoid operation number 10 or something like this because this is a default used by the system and then I'm going to enter a description for it I'm going to say test operation I'm going to select the department that's going to uh, perform this operation for this particular asset
So here I'm going to say body shop. And then the resource that's going to perform this uh, operation for uh, for this resource. The resource is going to perform this operation. And you can require how many units are required, say for two. And you can, of course, if there is if there is anyone you know that's going to be assigned, you can write here. You can leave it as blank. I'll leave it as a blank for now. Of course, I hear open the details and there is a standard operation that's not our f point for our discussion over here and if there is any shutdown required for uh, for this operation if there is a long description it's scheduled, here is the unit of measure for this resource is, is ours and the basis type here item and charge is done manually and the standard rate no, I'm not going to use standard rate over here So this is the uh, the operation and how I assign resources to it. Also, I have here the material requirements. I just have to say this is uh, this operation number X. For example, say number one hundred. And the system will respond to it. You see here, there is a, a, a field that's directly show up. Like okay, as you can see over here, there's a stocked inventory. This is come from the, your uh, your uh, your inventory the right away, or the inventory attached to the uh, to the maintenance workshop. And there is non-stock direct and description based. Description based on non-stock. If you are aware of the purchasing concept, there is a description based purchasing. That's you just don't have to write the the, the item code. Just have to write the description, and there is also non direct. This is an item we define in our inventory, but we don't usually stock it. It is very useful for reporting to know what what kind of uh, expense you buy for your uh, for your maintenance, your workshops. See here, for example, the stock inventory. This is the same concept. I'm going to uh, put any item I want over here. I'm going to select certain item. System will just pick, pick it for me. Here, you see, here is the item description, and I'm going to request the quantity or the amount for this operation. Now, if I wanted to save. Ah, uh, there is uh, an error in the assigned unit field. There is amount must be greater than zero. So uh, I'm going to say it's two, and save it again. And here is the work that I did it successfully. Now the status of the work is draft. I want if I want to release it. I'm just going to say as released. And then I'm going to apply. Now the work order is launched and ready for your usage and for your uh, your work. If I to, if I wanted to search this work order over here, you can see it's released. 
use the work order number if I clicked over here to view the work order details I'm going to view it so here is the operation, here is the operation number 10 this is the default one and these are the materials oh sorry here. and if you check the material over here you are going to see here the material requested the STRS4 and here is the direct item section as you can see the direct item is directly requested from the supplier there is no, there is no relation between it and the in our inventories so here you can see all in the columns this item description quantity amount and there is estimated cost in, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the currency and the functional currency over here of course if there is a requisition or a purchase order they will be mentioned over here in these columns okay if you want to check the material shortage as, as well in your maintenance inventory you can check it from here check the material shortage and here it will tell you if there is any material shortage that has been checked as you can see over here required allocation all in this in the same field here from open the details here is for this department on hand quantity you can check it from here you can see here the on hand quantity of the item so there is no shortage of it okay let's now consider that I want to issue this inventory item into this uh, work order what I'm going to do is from the stores here over here in the tab I will take a click on the stores tab I will select to issue the material we have two ways of issuing we have the one step material issue that you can issue all the materials at once from the inventory to the work order or you can issue it into two step uh, material issue however uh, for uh, the purpose to do something swapped over here we are going to use the one step material issue I will enter the work order here in the work order number and it's mandatory we can see here in the search see all the quantities required and this is for operation 20 I will select and I'll select the sub inventory for it. If it's serial controlled, I will select it from one serial to another. It will show from here, over here. I will select the serials from here. Of course, if I'm using ranges, I will put the from and to into two different values. If I'm using individual and there is no, uh, like, there is no serials or there is no uh, consecutive serial numbers, but I'm going to issue to the to the work order. I'm just going to enter them line by line, and I'm going to enter the serial. The from and two are the same. So back again. I'm just going to press on the issue. But of course, we're going to require the serial first. As you can see here, the material is issued. So 
now I have issued the material and got all the details what I'm going to do is that I need to complete the work order I'll just put the work order over here I can remove all the other details and